Hi guys, welcome back to Nairobi Legal. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the specific legal requirements for the different types of marriages that we have in Kenya. In line with our previous uh, video that we had on the elements of a valid marriage in Kenya, we discussed about the different types of marriages and to be more specific in this particular uh, video, I want us to break down each type of marriage so that you also see the specific requirements that are necessary for that marriage to be recognized in Kenya. Now when it comes to Christian marriages, uh, these are provided for under part 3 of the Marriage Act of Kenya 2014. So you can consider cross-checking uh, these particular sections so that you see the legal requirements that are needed for a Christian marriage in Kenya to be recognized. Now, just to bring out a few pointers, uh, Christian marriages are supposed to be monogamous, meaning that if a man is in a Christian marriage, even if he contracts another marriage, that second marriage is considered invalid. And the other thing is that for you to contract a Christian marriage in Kenya again, you must profess the Christian religion. Now, the second type of marriage is a civil marriage. Uh, remember that uh, there are people who prefer to have a civil marriage in Kenya and as far as legal requirements are concerned for civil marriages in Kenya uh, these can be found under section 24 to 42 of the Marriage Act of Kenya 2014. This act can be downloaded online and it's available and I've given you the pointers on where to find specific information. Remember that as you contract a civil marriage uh, one of the requirements is that you must not be in a prohibited relationship and uh, yesterday we discussed uh, that you can't marry your auntie, uh, you can't marry your grandmother and we actually listed uh, prohibited uh, relationships as far as the Marriage Act of Kenya is concerned. Uh, this means that if the person you're marrying falls under the category of prohibited relationships uh, then you cannot actually contract a valid civil marriage within the Republic of Kenya and obviously we discussed that uh, the person must not be below 18 years of age and also remember as you contract this civil marriage uh, there is a requirement that neither party meaning that uh, the intending parties to a marriage must not be married to any other person so if you actually married on any other person then you can't contract a valid civil marriage within the Republic of Kenya and the other type of marriage is a Hindu marriage and also Hindu marriages are monogamous and I'm sure you've seen a trajectory here. Christian, civil and Hindu marriages are considered to be monogamous and if you contract a second marriage alongside your first one, that second marriage will be considered invalid because already you have contracted a monogamous marriage within the Republic of Kenya. Having talked about the first three types of marriages in Kenya, which happened to be all monogamous, I want us to shift our attention to African customary marriages and Islamic marriages that are polygamous or potentially polygamous. Now, when it comes to African customary marriages, these are provided for under section 43 and 45, or rather to 45 of the Marriage Act of Kenya, meaning that if you want to know the legal requirements for customary marriages, uh, you have to refer to part 5 of the Marriage Act of Kenya 2014. One thing you need to remember is that as far as customary marriages are concerned, uh, these kind of marriages are celebrated according to the customs of the communities of one or both uh, parties to uh, this kind of a marriage, meaning that uh, a marriage can either be celebrated according to the Kikuyu tradition or the Luo tradition, depending on the tradition that either party chooses to follow as far as celebration of the African customary marriage is concerned. And like we stated earlier in our previous video, uh, this type of marriage is potentially polygamous, meaning that uh, you can marry any number of wives that you choose to. When it comes to the essentials of a customary marriage in Kenya, uh, these requirements are actually provided under Part 4 of the Marriage Act of Kenya. But just for you to understand a few requirements, there is a need uh, for payment of dowry and there must be consent freely given by both parties to a customary marriage. 
meaning that if someone has been forced into a customary marriage either by their parents and that person has not given their free consent then that customary marriage cannot be considered valid now if you want again to appreciate what i'm talking about as a family law student consider reading uh, these uh, case and also in terms of payment of dowry one thing you need to understand is that a person intending uh, to marry through customary law has no limitation on what amount of dowry needs to be paid however small the payment is that can be considered a payment of dowry and so according to section 432 of the marriage act of kenya and please remember to uh, put this section at the back of your mind a payment of a token amount is sufficient uh, to be considered uh, for you to have paid dowry according uh, to african customary marriages so what i'm trying to emphasize here is that even though a man has paid a small amount of money that small amount of money is sufficient uh, to prove that indeed there exists a customary marriage and the man went ahead to pay dowry so this is the essence of section 432 of the marriage act of kenya and again remember to appreciate uh, this um, father you need to consider reading this case now in more uh, videos to come i will be providing case summaries for these cases that i won't go into details at the moment so the takeout point from this slide is one needs to pay dowry however small it is and there has to be free consent between uh, both parties uh, and going into that marriage and actually what happens in circumstances where there is no free consent either from the wife or the man in that case a court can invalidate a customary marriage that marriage is not valid because there has to be consent freely given the next important step is that within three months of completing your ceremonies and taking the necessary steps as far as your traditional marriage is concerned you must go ahead and send a notification to the registrar of marriages expressing your intention to marry and in that notification you have to specify the particular african customary law that has applied meaning that if you have married based on the kamba tradition you have to specify this remember also you must have fulfilled all the steps as far as that marriage tradition is concerned and on top of that you have to submit a written declaration uh, that actually proves that necessary customary requirements have been undertaken already remember that the reason why you send this notification to the registrar is that uh, you are looking out for a marriage certificate not to forget that african customary marriages are recognized in kenya and again in this uh, notification you must confirm that at the time of marriage uh, you are both 18 years of age you are not in a prohibited relationship and there was free consent from both parties to this particular marriage remember like i stated in the previous uh, video we have prohibited relationships in that if you're marrying your cousin then that marriage can never be valid and that is provided for in the marriage act of kenya and if you want to understand prohibited relationships refer to our previous uh, video now the next step is that you must again do a declaration yeah that has to be signed and marked by two adult witnesses uh, who have played a key role in your cultural celebration meaning that even as you underwent this traditional uh, marriage ceremony if it was a comeback uh, marriage ceremony you have to have had at least two adult witnesses who are part of this process and these people have to go ahead and sign as far as this declaration is being uh, made remember we said you need at least two competent witnesses uh, for a marriage to be witnessed having fulfilled the previous steps now when it comes to registering an african customary marriage in kenya you have to make an application within six months for a marriage certificate now don't forget that african customary marriages are recognized within kenya 
and we also talked about circumstances under which you can convert an African customary marriage, which is potentially polygamous, into a monogamous marriage that will also still be an African customary marriage. So for you to understand conversion of marriage, refer again back to our previous uh, video. But not to forget, the purpose of this uh, slide is for you to understand that when it comes to registration of an African customary marriage, this application has to be made within six months so that you get a marriage certificate. And remember, you have to appear before the registrar of marriages in person. So you go with uh, your wife to appear in person, then um, do this application so that you get a marriage certificate. The next type of marriage that I want us to look at is Islamic marriage and uh, if you want to understand the requirements that uh, make an Islamic marriage valid in Kenya, you can consider looking at sections 48 and 49 of the Marriage Act of Kenya. Remember that um, Islamic marriages are celebrated according to Islamic law. Uh, these marriages are polygamous and the takeout point here is that according to section 49.3 of the Marriage Act of Kenya 2014, any parts of this act that are inconsistent with Islamic law and practices do not apply to persons who profess the Islamic faith. Just to give you an example here, we have a situation whereby Muslims are at liberty to marry their own cousins and the act provides for that exception because that's according to their Islamic faith. And so anything that is inconsistent with the Islamic law as far as section 49.3 is concerned not apply to Muslims. Having understood the elements of a valid marriage in Kenya, we have also discussed the specific types of marriages and the requirements that have to be fulfilled for those marriages to be valid within the Republic of Kenya. In our next video, we are going to be looking at void and voidable marriages in Kenya. And remember, if you're new to Nairobi Legal, consider subscribing so that you receive notifications each and every single time I will be posting a new video on family law in Kenya. Thank you.